Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be going over how to create monkey patches and just kind of like some good steps to follow when you're making them. This one should be pretty short as it's mostly just going to be going over how to modify some code without modifying the actual code and how to like create aliases and stuff, some pretty minor things. So after I created my last video, someone asked how do they create more boxes in PSDK, like in your PC. It's actually really easy to do, but uh, there's actually, I think, a slight confusion there. So in PSDK, you can create an unlimited amount of boxes as like a, as a user, as someone who's playing the game. But the initial amount of boxes that you have is only, I think, like 15. You could change that initial amount to like 30 if you wanted so that users don't have to go in and like automatically create a box or whatever. But um, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So the first thing I want to do is create a monkey patch for more initial boxes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scripts folder and we're going to create a new file and we're going to do 00100. This is just what I always do, but this number again can be anything as long as it's somewhere between, I think just like all zeros and anywhere between that and 99,999. So we're going to do 00100 and then we're going to do um, PC box change .rb. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to search for max underscore boxes. This is the constant that's used in the storage system. Um, I just searched something that I thought it would use and this was literally the first thing that popped up. So here we can see that it is in the module PFM class storage and it's ironically the first thing on the line. So it's actually really easy. We can just take all of this. We'll go back to our script and then we'll paste it. And then we are gonna do end for the storage and then we're gonna do another end for the module up there. Now we're just gonna make the change that we want, which was let's say 30 boxes instead of 15. Now, after making this change, you can launch PSDK, uh, create a new game and go into the PC to see your changes. Now, something that I noticed and that maybe you notice as well is that when you launch your game, you have this new error message, or it's not really even an error, it's just kind of a warning message that says, warning, uh, you are already have an initialized constant in PFM storage for max boxes. So what we need to do here in these situations, whenever we're creating or modifying a constant is we wanna go in and we wanna make sure that we are removing the constant before we're modifying it. So to do that, we just need to do remove const, then a colon, and then that constant's name, whoops, which is max boxes. And now when we launch the game, it's not gonna have that warning message anymore. And just gonna look like this, like normal. Now, if you change this constant to something higher than 30, or maybe even 32, um, it's gonna actually be a problem. So what you need to do and just to show you how to fix a situation like that, is you really do need to test everything when you are doing changes, no matter what change it is, even if it's something as minor as this. So when you launch your game now, you're gonna notice these unable to find text in specific line in dialog file in 100,016. To fix this issue and just show you even more what is actually happening, we're gonna start a new game. We're gonna go and interact with the PC. And we're gonna go to the left and we're gonna see that it's just not showing the dialogue, but then for some of them it is, but it's showing the wrong dialogue. Instead, now it's showing team instead of box. So what PSDK seems to do is uh, it shares uh, the dialogue file for boxes and teams since it kind of both used in boxes. So in a situation like this, we need to go back and we need to find that dialogue file. So we need to go to data, text, dialogues, and we need to go to that 100,016 now you should have this in your workspace and if you do then you can just search box 32 which i believe is the last one and you can go here and it's going to take you to the right csv now since we added a total of 45 boxes we need to make sure that we have enough dialogue here for 45. now i'm not going to do it for all of the translations but i'm just going to do it for the one that i'm using in my game all right so now that we have enough text for the 45 boxes we can go and launch our game and this time we won't have those uh, error messages more importantly when we create a new game and we go over here to the PC again. And we go to the left. It's going to show the right name here. So this is important because this uses the CSVs. Like this is kind of how it knows to give like that default name depending on the language that the player is playing in. But it was a pretty easy fix. So now moving on to another example. We're going to do a change to an existing method. This method is going to be the show ability and show item methods. Um, these are called in battle when an ability is shown. So for instance, say you have neutralizing gas i think that's the ability um it, it gets shown in the corner when that pokemon is sent out also like let's say the focus sash gets triggered there'll be in the corner and it'll show that item getting triggered now the change i want to make to this is i'm going to want to add a sound effect because by default psdk doesn't have a sound effect that place so to make this change what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file again 
and make sure that it's not in your Pokemon SDK folder, that it's just happening down here. And we're gonna call this one again, whatever you want, but I'm gonna call mine show ability item sound effect dot RB. And now what we need to do is we need to find those methods. So in this situation, we're going to look up show ability and I'm gonna look for the one that I know works, which is the one that's looking for the target and the no go out. It's a lot of them. So instead I'm just gonna look up target and no go out. And there we go, that made it a lot easier. It's not this one, but it is this one. And this is in, if we scroll all the way to the top, it's in the battle module and the visual class. So I'm just gonna copy that. We're gonna paste that. And then I'm gonna go back down to that show ability. I'm gonna copy all of this and then I'm gonna go back to my monkey patch and then I'm gonna paste it. And now I wanted to also modify the show item. So I'm gonna look up show item. And I know this is looking for the target. So I'm gonna go here, nope, here. And I'm gonna copy this one, I'm gonna paste it. And then we need to add two more ends for the uh, class and the module. All right, so now that our monkey patch is set up and ready, now we can make our actual changes that we wanna do. Something important to note is when you're making a monkey patch, it's always getting loaded after the initial scripts. So what that means is we need to make sure that if we're gonna wanna reuse an existing method, that we create an alias first before we make our changes. So right here, before we make our change to def show ability, we need to do an alias. I usually just go with default and then the method name. So in this case, it's just gonna be default show ability. And then you need to use the method name again so that it knows which method it's aliasing. Then we need to delete everything inside because we're not reusing the code because that's how you do what is known as bastardize the code, which is essentially when PSDK gets updated, you're still gonna be loading this old code that could have been modified. So instead what we wanna do is we wanna create our changes first, or sometimes you wanna do it after the initial changes, but in this case, I wanna do it before. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call an audio sound effect play and then we need to say the, uh, the path of that audio file. So in this case, it's gonna be audio sound effect in battle ability activate, whoops, dot mp3, okay? So this is just an audio file that I have in my audio sound effects folder. And then after that, I wanna call default show ability, and then I need to pass the parameters that were initially passed through so that it has everything again. So that we're gonna need to do target, no go out. We need to do the same thing down here for show item. So we need to do alias, default, show item, and then show item. I wanna get rid of all of this again. I'm just gonna use this same line again. And then I'm just gonna call default show item. And then again, we need to pass the target. So now we've set up a monkey patch that's adding in new code while also leaving in the existing code by aliasing it so that if it ever gets updated in the future, it's not left at its old state. Now to show what we just did in game, we're gonna launch, we're gonna go to game, I'm gonna switch over and I'm just gonna show you an example. So I just gave my Pokemon an ability that calls the show ability method so that I know if that my changes actually are working, there's gonna be a sound effect that gets played when it shows that ability. Which we can hear right there. It definitely did. Now I'm gonna show you an example real quickly where it doesn't because I forgot to actually have that sound effect in my audio folder. Hopefully through the two examples that I just showed you, you have a little bit better of an understanding of how to use monkey patches. In the next video, I promise we're gonna go over creating custom abilities. I already have the abilities like coded and ready that I wanna like use for the video. So it's ready to go. I should have it ready sometime this week. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.